Do you need a 70 to 200 to shoot sports? And the answer is yes, but there's a but. Let's talk about it. In this video, I wanna to talk to all my new sports creatives or intermediate creatives that keep asking the question, do you need a 70 to 200 to shoot professional sports, high school sports, little league sports, whatever kind of sport? The answer is yes. I feel like the 70 to 200 is like the perfect focal range for most sports, especially where you got the action far away from you. 70 to 200 is a good range. In the beginning of this video, I told you guys there was a but. I think in my personal experience and using uh, a lot of different focal links at NFL games, at NBA games, uh, for various professional sporting events, this lens, the Tamron 28 to 200, I believe is the best value for sports shooters that are just getting started out no matter what? So I'm making a hybrid creative pro bootcamp where I coach people uh, on different sports topic settings. If you guys want to check that out, description will be down in the link. But in my class, I talk about the Tamron 28 to 200 uh, so highly because the price that this costs compared to, and this is the 70 to 200 F4. If you're talking about the 70 to 200 2.8 G Master version one or version two, or a Canon 70 to 200 or Nikon 70 to 200, the Tamron 28 to 200 for the price and the versatility, I think everyone's kind of sleeping on this lens and missing out. That's why I wanted to make this video uh, so that you guys could see it. I use this lens at various NFL games throughout my time working for the NFL, freelance and for the NFL. But if you're just starting out in sports and you don't have the budget for a 2.8, I remember when I was coming up in my sports journey, I always had this notion in my head that if I got a 70 to 200 2.8, that would somehow make me better. And that just was not true. What is true is the quality that you get out of a 70 to 200 2.8 or even this F4 is really good quality because when you're out at 200 at F4, or at 2.8, those images are gonna look really, really good. But that's not until you know how to use the gear that you're working with. For example, I took a lot of pictures and videos for the NFL for some of the biggest teams, biggest players with the Tamron 28 to 200 on the Sony a7 III, Sony a7 IV, FX3. Sony A1, any camera body I could get my hands on or that, that, or that I could afford at the time, I use this lens. Now, I'm not saying for you to go out and shoot this in low light environments because let's get into this real quick. It's gonna be juicy for y'all. The thing that no one's talking about on YouTube that I think you all need to know, and if you know photography and videography, you know this is the most important part, is the light. When you're shooting an NFL game at any stadium in America, or overseas probably. The lighting in those conditions, you can shoot a 70 to 200 F4, uh, like I'm in Denver, at, at Empower Field, and I'm gonna get good images out of this lens no matter what. All right, okay, Lamar, well what about the Tamron? Same thing, if I'm shooting at 5.6 and I'm at 200, I'm gonna get a great image out of this lens even if it's a nighttime game. Would I rather have a 70 to 200 2.8? Of course, you always rather have a 2.8 if you need the light. But what I'm saying is if you're shooting at, let's take a, a, a big college, for example. If you're shooting at a big college that has really good stadium lights and you buy a 70 to 200 F4, that's all you need. Now, if you're shooting at a high school that has really bad lights and you shoot a lot of night games, you may need to buy that 70 to 200 2.8 because you're gonna need more light to get a cleaner image. That's the thing that I wanted to say in this video that uh, for anyone ever asking me about a 70 to 200 or what you should pick up, it all depends on the environment that you're shooting the game in, whether that's basketball, football, soccer. The lights of where you're going to shoot is the most important thing. And the last thing I want to let y'all know before I go, you don't need to buy this stuff. I think, again, with just society, the, the way that we make these videos, I'm not a YouTuber yet. Hopefully I can get to that point. Um, but you don't have to buy a 70 to 200 2.8 to use it during your game or your event. You can rent it. You can go to lensrentals.com and you can rent the 70 to 200 from Friday to Monday and then return it if you have the budget. So you can rent it for what, a hundred bucks or I don't know what the price is. I'll put the price on the screen. You can rent it for three days instead of buying it for two, three grand, two grand if it's the version one, three grand if it's the version two, that's gonna save you some money and it's gonna give you experience with the lens. My advice to any hybrid creative out there doing any type of sports work is try to rent a lens before you buy it. If you have the opportunity, if you have the money, 
try to rent the lens before you buy it. Again, a lot of us creating sports work, um, it's not all the same. Everyone doesn't have the ability to go buy a 70 to 200 2.8. Everything comes down to you and the person behind the camera. You can get it done with a Sony 70 to 200 F4. I got it done with the Tamron 28 to 200. The reason was because I couldn't afford to buy a 70 to 200 2.8. Do not let anyone tell you that you need a 70 to 200 2.8 to get good images because that is not true. Of course, it's gonna help if you're able to get the 7200 2.8 and that is an amazing versatile lens. But in the meantime, before you get there, the 7200 F4, Tamron 28 to 200 would be my recommendation for if anyone's looking to pick up a versatile length for sports. So you guys let me know if there's any other questions that you have for me about shooting sports, lenses, where you should be, uh, what focal length, what shutter speed, any sports related questions, I just want to be here and be a resource for you sports shooters out there. See you guys in the next one. Peace.